Find it for you in a second. Hey, what's up, guys? We are Nothing's back. Up. Why do you ask? We that? are returning for season four. It's episode one, and we're gonna kick it off right this year. Um, we've got some giveaways for the medium crew. Um, this episode is brought to you by Drew Avery and his book Rise of the Syndicate. We'll talk about that a little later. And Scott Moon has got some uh, giveaway codes for his book short story uh, Shorty. And uh, those giveaway codes are going to be going to our medium club this evening. And so if you're not signed up for the club, go ahead and go to our website and click on the mediums tab, put your email and your name in there, and you too will be qualified for these awesome giveaway codes from Scott Moon and his short story. So uh, we will get to that here a little later. We're going to talk about New Year's writing resolutions tonight. Uh, we've got almost the whole crew. Chuck Manley's here, Ralph Kern, Scott Moon, Steve Bollier, and myself, Josh Hayes. We are hanging out with a whole bunch of people already in the live chat. It's been going on for probably about 20 minutes now. So welcome, everybody, that are uh, hanging out with us tonight. Um, got a lot of people and a lot of shenanigans going on. So um, welcome. Uh, let's talk about, uh, what we've got going on this week. It's been two weeks since we've had a show. Um, Thursday night has been, uh, the writer's journey going strong the last couple of weeks, but we took a couple of weeks off from live because the holidays, as we figured, uh, Christmas Eve, everybody wanted to be with their families and then New Year's Eve, everybody's just getting shit faced and which really isn't any different from us being on the show. So that's I guess we could have done one day. anyway. I mean, that's. Yeah, cheers, right? Like, oh. so, um, yes, I've got the high class dinner wine. I don't know why. Uh, I need to get a monocle and I could just like have a monocle with a little. That's mustache. really insensitive to people who wear monocles, dude. <laughs> Brandon Sanderson would be upset with you, right? Now. Oh, yeah. He doesn't wear monocles. Um, so let's get <laughs> Let's uh let's kick off the show with uh, a little bit about uh, what we've been up to the last couple of weeks. Uh, Ralph has just been uh, drunk for like three weeks straight. I'm surprised he's actually <laughs> sitting up straight. And uh, Chuck is um, re recovering from being uh, from being, being sober a for a week. No, <laughs> well, he was sober, but he was also on death's doorstep. I was, actually, <laughs> like, I was high on a fever, so it really I wasn't. <laughs> yeah, sickness is the best drug. <laughs> well, since uh, since Ralph and Chuck probably won't have that much to talk about, let's go with them first. Who wants to volunteer? Uh, I'll go ahead. Um, yes, I was I was down for a bit, and um, before that, the grandkids and everybody was here and for the holiday, and you know, I just uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure those little bastards are the one that brought me my my uh, my my uh, infection. But uh, anyway, I was sick for a little bit, and the family came, and my uh, my work schedule took a pretty hard. This writing work that is took a took a pretty big hit, and uh, let's see, uh, my seasonal gig. A a terrorist attack didn't you uh, yeah, well no, definitely that, a, definitely a terrorist attack there was a terrorist attack on costco that i had to i had to intervene in and because of liability reasons they went ahead and let me go because you know they just they were afraid <laughs> that there would be some uh some fallback from that so <laughs> Chuck's uh, karate chopping people in the throat <laughs> you aren't getting the family pack of paper towels for that. <laughs> I have a certain set of skills. That's right. <laughs> Where's your card, scumbag? <laughs> did, did this take place over a 24 hour period? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> you know, right, he's gazing the people out in the parking place. lot. The people that don't get their receipt signed off on, he's facing them out with their highlighter. Come back. I got to highlight your receipt. Have you with my Sharpie. Ticking. <laughs> uh, my seasonal gig there uh, ended, so I'm, I'm back home. But that's when the kids came and I got sick. And uh, but in and amongst all of that, uh, I did get uh, Brace Cordova Incursion Audio on the market, and uh, the uh, Master of Hounds Audio is currently with ACX, and they're doing their stuff that they do to it. So that should be dropping in a week or so. And I'm plugging away on Brace Cordova three, and I have. Uh, I'm outlining Child of Magic, which is the second Pikmin Files book, and I've uh, got some other irons in the fire that I'm not ready to talk about yet, but uh, 
yeah, so between everything, I have been managed to be a, just a little productive. And I do have some plans for 2019 as far as New Year's resolutions, but I'll save that. Excellent. Ralph? Uh, yeah, like like Chuck, I was uh, I was man down for a while uh, over Christmas with uh, whatever that plague was that's been uh, going around over here. It sounds like it was going around over there as well. Uh, but um, yeah, I uh, so I stumbled into uh, a New Year's Eve party as well, um, <laughs> which uh, really added to uh, added to the effect of a combination of uh, uh, a near fatal man flu and copious amounts of wine, uh, which. Uh, which was good. Still managed to cruise on till 4 a.m. though. So, uh, you know, I am pretty hardcore in that way. Um, uh, understandably, I would hope to uh, our audience not too much writing uh, went on. However, uh, I did manage to get book two um, into uh, into a condition where it's off to uh, uh, book two of the Great War, into a condition where it can be off to uh, the editors and uh, uh, doing the revisions on my uh, draft of book three so uh, that's where that's where i am on uh, writing writing uh, stuff very good very good all right uh, who shall i pick who shall i pick uh, i'm gonna go oh, for yeah. josh because he's the left hand most josh what have you been up to? <laughs> uh let's see what have i done the last couple of weeks man i've been doing an absolute metric shit ton of writing um i cross the what did I cross today? 88,000? 88,000, I think. On Valor? Uh, on on Valor. Um, edge of Valor, technically. Edge of Valor, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I just started the... Well, I'm, I'm good deep into the third act now. Uh, 80, 89,173. 89,000 words on uh, Valor. And um, I've probably got 10,000 left, I would imagine. Um uh i can't actually i really can't believe it's it's still going and and the crazy thing is uh that it's it's as short as i could make it <laughs> like like there's absolutely no fluff at all and steve's looking at me like i'm gonna take your my red pin and just slash all over it and by the time i'm done it's gonna be twenty five thousand. i don't think it's going to be i think i think it's Sweet. it's pretty it's pretty clear could be um been doing a lot of stuff with uh the show getting stuff set up for season four um we've got a shit ton of stuff ready to go and uh in the wings for season four and the anthologies um i saturday i did a live video talking about the epic fantasy anthology and kind of previewed that a little bit did a little bit more work on it today um somebody was asking about art copies in the uh group today uh, amanda howard was and uh, I'm not sure when the art copies are going to be ready. I'm going to be probably sending proofs to the authors at the end of this week, probably Saturday or Sunday, and then art copies maybe a week after that, <coughs> really close to uh, launch day. Um, but uh, but it's it's coming along very well. Um, other than that, not a whole bunch. Uh, working on my short story for Chris Kennedy's uh, newest Four Horsemen anthology. And, uh, and just working, working, working. I've got some, some interesting news that will be very cool that I can't release just yet. Um, maybe, uh, maybe next week, maybe my next week's show, I'll have, uh, I'll have some news to, to release. So that's all I got for super, this week. Super uh, secret news. Super. I'm telling you, man, it's been, I haven't had a super secret thing since, uh, Stri uh, Strikers War since our Galaxy's Edge project, right? Uh, which I heard some really cool news on today that I still can't share, but I heard it, so it, it's it's still good. We should have um, an episode of nothing, but I just can't share this right now. Just yeah, whole, uh, whole, you're gonna <laughs> really love this thing, and the whole episode is we're not gonna tell you what we really love. Yeah, uh, let's see, Scott, you go next. I can't tell you, <laughs> it's a secret. <laughs> I'll tell you later. It's all, it's all a secret. I'll tell you when the show is over. Yeah, when the show yeah. in the post show. Yeah, we'll, we'll edit all this out and just have. <laughs> yeah, just staring at the screen. Um, I've been writing on trying to finish up the Forever Sirens, the third book in my um, uh, SMC Marauders series. But mostly, I've been working on a collaborative project that I'm starting with J uh, Jay and Cheney uh, in the um, Renegade Star series 
universe. So I've been writing on that quite a bit and writing a bunch of short stories and putting those out, which have I've got had a lot of fun with them. That's my main thing. Thinking about maybe doing those as a podcast. We've talked to a little bit about that because I was going to do as a as an you know as an ACX thing, but maybe do a podcast. But the big thing is I've been doing lots of home repair. As you can see, my mic has been. <laughs> That's so awesome. Oh, he's going to play his music on his mic. Uh, well, we we finally have sound effects. It keeps, you know, it kept coming unplugged and they would kick me off the, we had our meeting today and I had to like reboot like 15 times because every time it falls out, I had to restart. So that was so yeah. much fun watching him drop in. Come on, drop in. I know. And I'm always so, so uh, nice and calm about it too. I never hardly punch any walls. <laughs> But, uh, so that, that was my temporary solution. I am ordering a new mic. I'm going to get a, uh, I think I'm going to get an Audio Tech Boom mic, the headphone thing like that. That's all in one, and try that, see how that works. So that's it's probably a thing. good thing that you're in the basement because you can punch the foundation, and it's not going to yeah, like. You know, I, I don't really actually punch things anymore. I've outgrown that mostly. <laughs> I, <think you're> <laughs> mostly. <laughs> I was really waiting well, for him to lift his hand, I'm... bloody mangled hand. Yeah. You know how angry Scott is when uh, with the Richter scale and uh, <laughs> when, you <talk> <laughs> when you have oh, when you have tsunamis in India, you're like, well, Scott got <laughs> pissed off again. Sorry yeah, about it's that. It's always really <laughs> hilarious for everybody watching. It's not so much fun for me afterwards. I feel like a dummy. So try to, try to try to maintain some sort of semblance of rationality. Yeah, I feel your pain, man. But good time. So writing, um, doing the show. Watching all the new stuff Josh has been doing on the show, and the uh, no, I don't have a punching bag anymore. Um, but I had one at one time, so I managed to get a new one. But, um, yeah, a lot of good, a lot of big things coming this year. Going to be a good year for lots of things, not just writing. Indeed, Steve. What about you, brother? Well, because of the chat, I just ordered a bunch of Prada things just so I can uh, <laughs> make everyone happy, I guess. I don't know. Uh, man, I, just like week to week for you guys, does week to week just really blend together? Like you just yeah. don't remember what I, I'm in that state right now. I think that the post Christmas, New Year's, um, just since the last time we got together, man, it's just been like one thing after another and just trying to maintain uh, family life and writing life. And um, book three, see, I can't even remember what book is coming out tomorrow. Book three in the Barry Goddess Saga is coming out tomorrow, um, which of course means today was like crazy, just trying to get everything ready and geared up and had a bit of a scare with Amazon where they just decided to delete our series page this morning. Um, as we started this big promo for books one and two for the coming out of three tomorrow. And so like, I was freaking out all day thinking, crap, I don't even have a series page now, but they got it taken care of. Amazon actually did their jobs and it was exciting and it was a time to rejoice. Um, I got all of our hard covers done and like, on the website for purchase finally so um all in all it's been a pretty uh, a successful time started working with a new artist for athon and i'm hoping to um to get him moving along i'm trying to get with freaking josh's artist to get all of his valor covers done but that dude just doesn't like money apparently so um <laughs> either that or he's super busy it's well i'm gonna go with he doesn't like money and so probably um but all in all, exciting times. Um, the backup guy is pretty good, though. I, listen, I think he could probably pull off the style just as well if we wanted to keep book one and, and go from there. But um, Josh already mentioned it. I'm really excited to read Valor. I think that it's going to be really good. Um, Rick Partlow actually sent in his manuscript for book two today, so I'm excited to dig into those, man. Uh, impressive, Congrats, man. He's an impressive writer, and he does a great job with with, uh, with what he does. And so I'm excited about that. Um, things. I, I don't know. Was, was there actually a question or was that it? What? Or is that me? What happened? Did I, did you lose me? I didn't hear anything. Oh. I, I heard Steve. Uh, I, I didn't hear anything. I, I, just, I just heard Josh interrupting Steve. Uh, I think we lost Josh. Josh no, lost. it's my headphones. It's not my, my, you my, know, my headphones. You should put a, if, if you put a rubber band around <laughs> just put yeah, a rubber band your headphones like cross your eyes. Hey, I don't know what happened. I think uh, uh product, I think Mike, product would you I, get Josh some new headphones, please, product? Thank you. 
I think my clapping scared my Bose headphones. <laughs> They're not dolls, JR. Hey, those dolls have been very popular. I mean, those collective action figures have been very popular. We're thinking about are. renaming the whole show after the dolls. <laughs> <laughs> Writing dolls. The jealousy within JR is strong. Very, very strong. Very, very strong. He sees my, my Star Wars collection over here. Mm -hmm. You know, he just can't handle it. Can't handle it. So let's talk about duct tape. Um, duct you know, tape. actually, before we get into the, get into the next level, Scott. let's talk about the show sponsor for today before we get into the resolutions. So I'm sure as soon as we start talking about that, we'll lose track of time and it's close enough. So I'm going to copy the uh, link and drop it in the live chat. Links in the live chat now. Um, today's sponsor is Rise of the Syndicate by Drew Avery. Uh, it is uh, an, the next book in his uh, Dead Planet series. Can one death save humanity? 500 years ago, after colonizing Mars, a new challenge arises, the largest global terraforming project in history. As the World Council seeks financing to invest in technology that could replace the Archeon colony's giant dome habitat with an artificial atmosphere, some members stand in oppression. Unfortunately, the, those resisting... Uh, the coming change do so at their own detriment. Following the murder of his wife, Halem Scrimshire is on a path for vengeance. Framed for her death, Harlan believes Murata's prominent opponent, Councilman Tetran Ryan, conspired against her, leading to her untimely death. But the clock is ticking for him to prove his theory before justice falls on him. If ha Halen is wrong, he goes down for murder. If he's right, he may discover a sinister plot that will alter his future and that of the Martian colonies as well. Rise of the Syndicate is set at the same uh, universe as Drew Avery's best-selling Dead Planet series. It's available for pre-order on Amazon right now. The link's in the chat. It's $2.99. Go and pick up Drew's book. Uh, he's a good fan of the show. He's been on several times. His writing is very good. It releases the end of the month, but you can get on pre-order now. And if you have a book that you'd like to sponsor the show with, or if it's a product uh, like a formatting deal or covers or whatever you do, whatever service you provide, you also can sponsor a show. It's extremely cheap, but the spots are filling up super duper quickly. Um, I think we've had probably 13 or 14 people send me emails in just a day um, getting multiple spots. So if you would like to... Um, get signed up on that send me an email keytruckmedium at gmail.com and sign up for a episode to sponsor or two see i thought that i was going to read that tonight so i've been practicing scrimpshire oh. all day long oh, halem scrimpshire halem what? scrimpshire halem scrimpshire what? why did you stop me i forgot you were I supposed mean, you, to read you it. didn't even breathe between saying drew avery's new book rise of the syndicate and the description so i just let it go i mean you did such a you know a i mean bang I up job really with that I, scrimpshire. Did, I did really good on that one I thought I did. I did fairly well. And you didn't say Harlem once, which I said Harlem at least three times while I was practicing <laughs> earlier. So, <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah, you'll have to slap me next time, and you can do the reading next next episode. Nah. Or, or you can read it again. You want to read it again since you've been practicing? I already did. I just did. You didn't even hear it. It was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Man, somebody posted on uh, on one of the pages I follow. They posted a meme that was. Um, I really want a 15 hour long audio book. That's just heavy breathing and page turning. And then at the end go, Oh, out loud. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> you, you hear like every so often you hear a toilet flush and the toilet seat come down and you're like, was he just reading in the shitter? <laughs> Scratching uh, noises and grunting. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Barda today asks, is it possible to be a show sponsor for a series? Like a series of books? You, can, I mean, you could use anything you want to sponsor the show, uh, Bart. Anything at all. Oh, uh-oh. Somebody's losing the football game, Chuck. Yeah, something's going on. <laughs> so it's, I don't know. It's, I, I, like I said, I don't give a shit about is football. It foot, is, is it football or basketball? Is football on Monday? No, or? it's football. It's not, Alabama's playing. That's really all she cares about. So I, it's some kind of big game. I don't know what it is. <laughs> the whole state? Is the whole state playing? That's weird. Usually the that's the way it goes. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about New Year's resolutions, guys. Um, 
like that's a it's always a huge deal for resolutions um writer centric to the show i always start the year off saying i'm going to get this many words a year or i'm going to do this many books a year or uh whatever whatever it is uh for me personally last year my goal was 1500 words a day uh, i did not make that goal um and i've shown my spreadsheet before um i had several months that i had zeros uh across the months uh, my goal this year um, currently is 2,000 a day. Soon it will change, but right now it is 2,000 a day, and I'm, I think I've only not made the mark once so far. Um, and even then, I started the next day. <laughs> this is so cool. Uh, even even then, I only missed it once, and it did did deter me. So. Um, one of the things like Scott and I talk about a lot is setting reasonable goals and um, not having a day where you like today, Scott, you wrote 7,000 words. I did. You're like, oh, I could do that every day. Yeah. And and that then you set your goal for the year. I'm going to write 7,000 words a day. And uh, then the next day he gets 500 and he wants to throw his Mac out of the window. Um, Rick Partlow asks Josh every day or just the days that you're writing a book. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to get, I, I want to get 2000 a day, um, new words a day. I'm trying, I'm trying to going through this year, um, not touch my writing time in the morning with anything other than writing and then do my editing and business stuff and keystroke stuff in the afternoons and the evenings. Um, I don't know how well that will roll. Um, especially, coming up here in a couple months we'll have to look at schedules and see what's working and what is it um it's e it's easy to go and start your writing time and go but this really needs to be done this businessy thing for the writing i really need to get this newsletter out and then next thing you know you got you know you didn't get your writing down which is more important right right and we all we've all done it i think right uh rick's asking if it's seven hundred and thirty thousand words for the year i I think that's right. I haven't done the math, but I think that's right. Um, 720 ish, give or take. Oh yeah. Whatever. I got like 250,000 last year. Oh, a little over 250,000. So you only need to roughly triple it. I mean, that's fine. Yeah. It's not a big deal. It's not a big oh, deal at all. I can do that. There's a Facebook group. I'm a part of It's like a, mil a millionaire, mil millionaire word counters. I can't remember, but it's like 27, 2,733 words a day is over a million words a year. And that's, that's wow. a lot, but that's not like, that's not like, not like 10,000 words a day. Yeah. But I mean, still though, if you're doing say 2,000, 2,500 words, seven days a week, all year. Right. I mean, that's, that adds up but, damn fast. Yeah. If you're doing, and if you're doing a thousand days, a thousand words a day, every day, that's still like four, pretty good sized books in most genres. Oh yeah, so, for sure. It's yeah. consistency and staying, you know, and, and right. One George words. Martin. Right. Right. As long as yep. they're all your good words. Um, hey, well, and that's a thing too. Like I, I, I count written words, not saved words. So like when I edit, I don't, I don't delete while I'm editing. And I'll write new words. Like I'll I'll use the strike through text. And if I find words that I need to delete, I'll just strike through them and continue to write and write over them. And so I'm always counting positive words until I get done with my writing session or get done with the day. And then I go back and delete all the strike throughs um, after I've put in my written words for the day. And so like I could write a thousand words, but then delete three thousand. Well, I still got a thousand words for the day. Uh, I count that as positive. Um, Please don't ever let me see that particular manuscript. That would make me throw up. Like to see well, a bunch of strike through. <laughs> so I, but I delete it. I delete it at the end of the day. Mm. I'll, I got during the time that I'm writing, I'll, I'll strike through it. And then as, after I'm done and I know I'm finished, I'll just go back or I'll delete it before I start writing the next day. I, that's the best case scenario. There have been times when I forgot to go back and delete all the strike through text. And I was looking at my Scrivener thing and I was like 500 words away from my word count. And I'm like, yes, I'm so close. 
And then I go That's back right. and I start looking through all the sections and there's like literally like 10,000 words of strike through text. And I'm like, oh, I was way far away. That didn't work out. Yeah. Uh, so you. who's got the next, uh, who's got the next resolution? I'll go next. I don't care. Uh, we don't need dead air. Um, does, it, does it involve, you know, facial hair? Cause we've got a lot of comments in the live. Um, comment, you, you know, know I'm, uh, I've, I've called Prada and they're going to hook me up with some beard hair jewelry. Um, it's going to be pretty, pretty amazing. Really. I didn't know that was a thing. Uh, well it is now. I mean, we write about it in fantasy all the time, you know, yeah, like, dwarves gold, I always have gold medallions jangling. Like, why can't I do that? Um, yeah. The, the I answer is I can. Even, I can do that, and I will do that. Firecrackers like like Blackbeard. You know, I will. Man, you, you wait. Nothing. You wait till next week. I'm gonna be jeweled out, and it's gonna be just amazing. Um, my yeah, he's like, kind of short, so he works out. Like it's bedazzled. Steve. I wait. I'm short. All you need is like a war hammer. I'm taller than like you. A, what a Viking helmet. I, my heart is hurt right now. No, I'm kidding. Um, let me uh, let me just. Can I talk? Is this my turn to talk? No, I, talk no. I thought it was. My turn to talk. Um, Christy, yeah. I am six foot uh, ish, six foot six one. So no, I'm not short. I'm not a dwarf. Okay. The the, the ish is less. But I'm really it's less in, than. I'm actually offended by the word dwarf um, and every other word that you could say. I'm offended by a lot of things. So just keep saying offensive things to me. Um, I'll be offensive. Let me tell you a sad story. Two peanuts walked down the street, and one was a... Oh, sandwich. for fuck's sake. Right, um, <laughs> <laughs> this is the best part of the show. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, here we go. Yeah. So, my resolution... I'm out of here. Latest. <laughs> <laughs> we call it open loop. Let's do it. <laughs> oh man, my resolution. Uh, my resolution is actually flip flop opposite of Josh's. And there's, I'll just say, there's nothing wrong with Josh's, so don't misunderstand that at all. Um, I'm gonna try my hardest to worry less about word count this year. Um, I said it earlier when I was, uh, yeah, when I was talking to you guys earlier um, in the at the you know, post meeting, I said that I'm really just gonna focus on writing every day. And uh, my goal has always been a thousand words a day. If I hit a thousand words a day, I'm happy. Uh, but I really want to set myself up for 2019. My expectations. I'm gonna. My expectation is gonna be set at right words. And that way, if I don't hit a thousand, I'm not disappointed. I'm not like at 11:30 at night when my wife wants to go to bed. I'm like, but I have to write words. I have to write words. The reality is if we're writing every day, in my opinion, if I'm writing every day, I'm going to achieve the goals. My goal this year is to finish the Buried Goddess Saga, which is books four, five, and six. Four is almost done. Uh, it's sitting at about 130,000 and we've got another like 30,000 to go. We'll be done by February and then we'll start five and six. Um, so the goal is to finish those three books and get that series done and at least packed away for the time being. And then we want to, um, basically edit the sci-fi series, the Luna Missile Crisis. We want to get that edited and book one ready for, um, for audio books by the end of the year. If I've got those four books by the end of the year done and, and out somewhere and doing something, that's it. Like that's the goal. Um, and if that takes me all year to do, and some days I write 17 words and other days I write 6,000 words. Awesome but I'm so tired of beating myself up over words. And, and so I'm just encouraging those of you who beat yourself up over words. Just don't just figure it out, make a better goal. Cause you're hurting yourself. If you, if you beat yourself up, like I have. But on the flip side of that, if you don't have a goal, then it's sometimes it's hard to push yourself to write. And I think sometimes you need that little, that little encouragement, that little push, um, to to get in right and and sit down and get the words if if you don't have a goal then you're not uh it's I you know nobody's gonna come no nobody's gonna come over to your house and shoot you with a taser if you don't get two thousand well i might i i, I might, might. Uh, we might but remember the goal the goal is that like i know how long my books are and so like hopefully you guys know how long your books are and so i know that i've got to write mm -hmm like 400,000 words by the end of this year. And now I split that in half because Rhett and I basically do 50-50 on our writing. So I have to write about 2,000, 250,000 words. Like that's doable. 
Uh, I, I just don't need to stress out over, I don't know, you got, I, I stress out over like, I want to hit 5,000 words today. And then when I don't, I'm pissed off at myself and I don't want to do that anymore. That's just yeah, me. There's I, think a that's a, I think that's a healthy choice. I really do. And I th- uh, all kidding aside, just from a strict mental health standpoint, ease up on yourself, man. Yeah, you know, we all, we all have different, we all have different, you know, capabilities, you know, some well, people. And, and like, I forget that like I'm editing a book today and then like, like I edited 7,000 words and I'm like, but I didn't yeah. write words. And it's like, come on. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you're a fucking human being and there's only so many hours in the day. So yeah. it's like, just, yeah, man, he's up on yourself. It's so not, that's me. That's my goal. And that's, that's just me personally. And I don't push that on any of you guys because I'm s- super excited to see Josh hit 750,000. Uh, cause I think he will, I've, I've seen his ridiculousness. So I, I think there's a couple of things with that. I think that it's that, you know, you're kind of, you're both right. And I think you can have the best of both worlds. I think where it starts to get frustrating is people want a certain level of productivity or success. Maybe they go hand in hand, but if you're honestly giving yourself the time to write and being there, right, trying to do the writing and you get 500 words and that's great. But what a lot of people do is like, I want to write this many words, but then they're off mowing the yard and updating Instagram and spending fucking six hours a day on Facebook. And then they're pissed. I can't, I can't get that many words. Well, if you, if you are sitting down to do the words and they don't come, then don't stress about it. But if you're off fucking around doing something completely unrelated and you're mad, you're not getting your words done, then that's unhealthy. And that's going to lead to a lot of stress. Mm -hmm. And right. I do that to myself all the time. I'll make like a hundred spreadsheets. I'm like, why can't I get any writing time? <laughs> hours doing the it is amazing the things we will come up with to avoid writing. Oh, absolutely. Get that resistance charged yeah. up. I mean, I just oh, really oh, want to what stress was that, that. What was that quote, Steve, about resistance? What was that quote? Uh, it's not worth doing. It's, it's, why, it's, it's why Lacutus is futile. Uh, Re- resistance is, is not worth having in your life. Stop doing it. I, I don't I know. Is this I'm like a Borg kidding. motivational speech? <laughs> See? Ralph knew. I'm, I'm oh, kidding, he, didn't, man. he didn't. He didn't get the Steve Stephen Pressfield Locutus reference. I didn't. Our, I, our I didn't know the name Locutus. So like, and I I still don't care about. It. I hate Star Star Trek. I'm not a Star Trek guy. Um, <laughs> now it all comes out, and now we fight. Everybody, yeah, that, so, <laughs> the gloves come on. I mean, I've always heard resistance is futile, but I always thought that it was just Picard. I didn't realize that it was like some Picard's alter ego or some crap like that. Well, it's Picard. Yeah. It's just Picard with a whole bunch it's of board. Picard board. Board. Yeah, yeah. So I just didn't know that. Um, can I just? I want to just reiterate because I feel like disclaimers <laughs> are important, guys. This is yeah, just. This is just me. This has nothing to do with like, if you guys feel like the goal is I want to write 6,000 words a day, like please do. And don't feel like I'm going, you don't need to do that. I just don't need to do You're that. You're bad for writing words. Yeah, yeah. I just I just don't. It's not where I'm at right there. Yeah. Is I don't think you need to worry about it. You're bad for not writing words. That's what I hear you say. I am. No, I'm sorry. I'll shut it down. <laughs> uh, let's see. Who's next with their resolution? I nominate Raph. Go. go on then. Go on then. Um, right. Um, probably like what you've alluded to, Steve. I think goals should be um, achievable uh, and challenge, but challenging, yet without absolutely wrecking you. Um, so uh, I got roughly two hundred and fifty thousand words last year, just over. Um, so I think you know. I think we've got to shift up a little bit, or I've got to shift up a little bit. So uh, I think. I, you know, if I was looking at pure word count, which I don't think is the, the biggest measure ever or the most major measure ever, I'll go for call it 300,000 words would be what I want to do. But there's other softer goals as well. Where one of the things that um, Scott was aiming for, I mean, the same we have over here is uh, make sure you don't get paralysis by analysis. Um, I certainly know that I'm majorly, majorly um, uh, bad at that. Uh, but one of the things, I'm a bit of a research junkie. And uh, you know what? I, I think I, I think like in my writing life, I've got a reputation for having well-researched stuff. But you know how much is that is cutting into productivity? I, I maybe need to sort of get balanced on that. So when I sit down for my writing time, rather than spending like two hours sort of surfing through Wikipedia's and watching uh, YouTube's and uh, 
uh, and, 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 and all that kind of thing. All for what basically might amount to a sentence or two. Sometimes it's ridiculous. You know, maybe I should be a little bit more freewheeling. Um, I don't know. Maybe something I'll, I'll work on and consider if I can do it without damaging the author reputation that I've built up. Um, secondly, uh, we, we've been talking about this Keystroke International, uh, something that uh, I'm keen to get on, uh, get up and running with um, uh, Devon and John. Uh, I know John's uh, really taken the international part of that and running with it. He's been off to uh, Bali. Uh, so, uh, um, yeah, uh, you not get we, much more international. Yeah. <laughs> so, Keystroke International might be, uh, might, you know, it's a travel uh, yeah, show. Yeah, it might be a travel <laughs> show. Partly <laughs> with Keystroke International. Um, so, uh, but when, once he comes back, I think, uh, well, not I think, we will um, sit down and get our uh, asses and gear, get our first, or asses as you guys would call it, uh, gear about getting the schedule up and running and um, get the first uh, episode produce, uh, produced on that front. Um, on that note, uh, woohoo. Um, the missus has uh, finally got tired of my crappy iPhone earphones and uh, for Christmas bought me a proper microphone uh, thing. Nice. Uh, which, uh, I have to actually figure out how to uh, use it. It sat downstairs in the kitchen. Uh, I came home today and uh, I only came home what, uh, uh, about 2, uh, 1 a.m. Or, or thereabouts. Uh, Nathan said, uh, let's do a sprint. And I was like, Yes, yeah, so let's do a sprint. Got, got through the sprint, and then uh, you guys started to talk about the show, and I was like, shit. <laughs> so, uh, I was going to ask you where, <laughs> where your new mic was. <laughs> so, uh, so, yes, apologies. I will set that up. Well, in time for Keith Rogue. Yeah. See, we're oh, also so proud. What, I mean, what are you going to chew on then? If you have a new mic, what are you going to chew on? I, I, I'll, still, I'll still bring this with me. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I need a new displacement thing, and. Uh, uh, worse for today, I, I know that um, I might have uh, got a little bit of a reputation apparently for uh, uh, being the drunken soak of the uh, group, but uh, having spent most of my New Year's a drunken soak, I'm uh, trying for a bit of a dry January, uh, with the exception of my birthday as well, so, uh, you know, it would be strange to be sober. <laughs> I don't Indeed. like it. It could happen. It could be done. weird. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> it takes a support what, team, but it can be done. What, what, what's it called? It Terry Pratchett. There's something called being nerd, isn't there? So it's being so uh, <laughs> so sober, you start going the other way. So right. We'll see what, what, what effect that has. Um, but yeah, I think I think I, I completely agree with. Um, uh, with um, what you said. Uh, Steve, I think beating yourself up um, is something I'd like to do less of. Um, I know that one of my characteristics is I can be a little on the OCD side. Uh, so um, the levels of frustration I feel when, uh, you know, when I when I sit, sit my ass down and they're like, well, uh, you know, I've, I've decided I'm going to do some writing. And then for whatever reason that doesn't happen, I get quite frustrated and angry, probably disproportionately so. Um, so I need to uh, I need to get a grip on that. Um, especially, I would suggest, as I'd hope at some point, uh, to go full time. And uh, and you know I think that could be quite damaging to mental health if I um, uh, if, if if I let that take take over too much. So uh, that's probably been a little little too honest. But I'm sure that's challenges many of us have, uh, have faced in our time. Um, We're all about honesty. Yeah, in 2019 yeah. is the year of honesty. Well, Oh, well, and one of the things that what that uh, that that uh, Steve and, and Scott and I talked about earlier today was uh, when you talk about the word counts, like I set mine at two. Uh, last year I had it at 15 and I didn't make my goal. So this year I set it at two. I might not make my goal. Right. Um, but like Scott, there are some times where you go, oh, I get 5000 words. today. I could do 5000 words every day. And then we you don't you get into this kind of. Yeah. Uh, I, hulk smash type mentality but so when you look at your setting your word goal or your resolutions like it's got to be manageable because if you go i'm going to get five thousand words every day no matter what and then as you go through it you get into your your writing week and halfway through the week you might get 500 really good words but the rest the 4500 words that you get after that completely suck Right. And you get into this downward trend of, I've got to get 5,000 words. It doesn't matter how good the words are. I'm just going to go and, and type 
word after word after word to get to the 5,000. There's a point at which you get some diminishing returns there and your quality over quantity really starts to just go away. Well, you know, so think about that. that. So how that, how that started that conversation was, is I would do um, – like I'd have like like I'd have like six days off in a row for some reason, you know, like the kids would be in school. And so you go in there, you got you got nobody at home, you got six, six seven days off, you do nothing but all the stuff you want to do, you write and you do all those things. And then that's when I would set my goals. And then you get back to real life, back when you got a job and a part-time job and the kids are on break and you're frustrated and stuff. So that's that's not healthy. You have to be realistic. But I do think, I mean, I think that what Steve is saying is extremely important, but I also know that there are times we have to push and that's how you get stronger and better and faster. Yeah. And sometimes you have to push. You just can't do it all the time. And it's okay to say, I'm going to write 5,000 words, but you got to be okay when you don't. Challenging, right. but, challenging but achievable, I think. Right. Well, no, no, one, no one sits on a bench and uh, expects another to uh, way. immediately do 80 kilos, do they? Or, whatever you've got to you've got to build up to it but once you get to 80 kilos you can't sit on that bed just simply expect to jump to 100 kilos you've got to you've got to you've got to operate at 105 110 percent of your capability you build, you maybe set process. your aspirations there and then accept that you might be say if you set your goals at 110 percent of your previous goals you've got to be willing to accept that you might only get to 105 percent but it must be higher than the previous hundred percent if that makes sense from articulating yeah, it oh yes well i yeah. would like to offer an alternative uh view on the whole so many words per day thing because i believe that when you if you're in a situation where you know you've got kids and a job and a life it's hard to say i'm going to do x number of words because you don't know some days like you've said before you could knock out i can knock out a thousand words in about 45 minutes if i sit down and i'm, yeah. and, I'm and i'm cruising but like if 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 i had a full-time job and i was a single dad and all this stuff i i might not be able to do that because i have other demands on my time sure and i think that everybody's hung up on word count because everybody's hung up on being fast producers because fast producers seem to be the ones getting paid. And I get that. But if you're in a situation where meeting a word count is difficult, I would recommend taking the Dan Brown approach. Dan Brown doesn't have word counts or page counts or anything like that. He sits down and says, I'm going to write for four hours. I might get 500 words, I might get 3,000 words. But for people who have other demands on their time, I think it might be wiser to just say, you know what? I am going to not watch insert TV show of your choice here this right. week. And I'm going to spend that hour writing. Or I'm going to spend the 30 minutes before dinner writing. And I'm going to devote that time to it and just sit down and get however many words down in that time slot that you can get down. Yeah. Because a lot of times I think if you set that hard and fast number of X number of words and you're super busy, you're going to fail more often than you're going to succeed. But if you say, oh, yeah. I'm going to spend a half an hour giving it a hundred percent, I think that's an easier goal to achieve and keep yourself motivated. Well, which fits in with our sprint, sprint mentality. We've been seem to, uh, um, not fallen into but sort of gone into which um, scott sort of introduced to the uh, introduced to the team and uh, uh, and i found that massively effective in being efficient with our time i've been able to do it for the last month because i've been on an editing cycle for me sprints don't work for edits um but one of the other the other things that um i was thinking about for a, for a new year's eve goal and uh, again it might be one for the collective is um when, once I get to uh, the release phase, for me anyway, but you can happily do it earlier, uh, would be doing similar things for sprints on, say, AMS keyword ads and stuff like that. So sitting down and say, right, for half an hour, we are focusing on our own AMS keywords, bang. Uh, and just in that, cause that's one of the things that for, I know I don't devote enough time. I screw around with it. I screw around on it. But I don't. I don't really ever want to sit down and it's not one of those things I want to sit down and do. No, whereas if, whereas if I, if, if I do like, if, if, if 
perhaps uh, like you know every every once a week we have a devoted sprint uh, on keywords. Maybe that's something that. The, 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 like the, a writing the, sprint or a dedicated writing time or dedicated marketing time or dedicated marketing yeah, study yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, perhaps not study time because I think it would be something actionable out of it. But so, you know, revise your keywords. Weed the, weed the crap ones that aren't spending or, or aren't converting more accurately. Yeah, like Start it. generating the new ones. Uh, yeah, maybe that's, that's, that's very thing. smart. So... Okay. You know, well, I just I just did some math here, and let me just share this with you. So I said like two hundred fifty thousand roughly was like the goal. Um, I don't write on Sundays at all, and so like I, if you were to write seven days a week, two hundred fifty thousand, um, you'd be writing like six hundred and thirty thirty four words a day. Like that's that's not right. That's not even right. the thousand. That's not even the thousand that I was talking about. And if you did it six days a week, all year long, we're talking about 798 words a day. So, Josh, do you remember earlier today you were talking about how people set these really arbitrary numbers for, like, I need to make $100,000 yeah. a year in order for me to retire – or not retire, uh, go full-time as an author. Like, that's super arbitrary. Well, like, in my case, 1,000, 2,000, 2,500, that's, like, a really arbitrary number that I don't know where I came up with that. Mm-hmm. But I just figured out my number is 798 words a day in order to achieve uh, roughly the book count that I need to achieve. And so maybe the goal is to just figure out what you actually have to write. Because like this last six months with me being full time and living at and working at home, living at home, I have a four year old and a one and a half year old. I spent this last six months telling like getting mad at my son so many times for just like being a four-year-old because I had to write my words mm -hmm. when the reality yeah, is I probably already hit my word count for the day that I needed to hit. And I could have just been sitting there playing Mario brothers with him so that he would actually feel like he had a dad. Mm. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's too transparent, but like, that's how it is sometimes for me. Like, dude, can you just shut up for a little while? No, he's just being four and he's just like trying to have fun with his dad. That's home. No, a, a lot, a lot of writers are, um, a lot of their time is taken by family and friends and stuff. And, uh, Josh and I had this conversation uh, during one of our, our coffees at work. And I was talking about how, you know, there's some things you can't like, you can't, like, I can't tell my, I can't cut that time with my family or my friends or my work because they're paying me to come to work, but I can cut it in other places. Like I cannot get in my own way. I can tell my writing friends who understand, hey, you guys got to leave me alone for a while. I got to go black. I got to black. I got to go dark for a while and get some writing done. So I think that we all do that. We need to not resent the people that are important in our lives for interfering with the writing time. But we, but we can, there are people that we can tell no. Right. And, and it's because we, like Josh and I, respect each other. We know each other's writing goals and dreams. And so if I'm wanting to, to harass him about my latest frustration, he says, dude, I need to write right now. And then I'll be, that's cool, man. I'll talk to you when you're done writing, you know, and, and then social media falls into that. We get it. We were kind of a slave to it sometimes. Sometimes we need to just turn it well, off. What, one of the, the, the paralysis by analysis that uh, I refer to, it's, I sometimes know that, um, uh, you know, when, when we, when we go off on one, we, we, we sometimes sort of analyze things or, or, or you know, someone's posted something on 20 books and stuff like that. It starts a big, long debate. And, uh, you know, we get, it's almost like we've built in our own paralysis by suddenly, like, taking on someone else's woes and things like that. So, you know, I don't know, maybe, maybe there's an opportunity to, to, to cut things a little bit there. And, uh, you know, because it's so individual writing, isn't it? Yeah, we got to live our own lives, do our own things. Well, let's uh let's talk. Uh, Chuck and Scott still have to give their uh, resolutions. I think I don't think we've touched theirs yet. Uh, who wants right, to go first, Chuck or Scott? All right, Scott, tell us about your new punching bag. Yeah, <laughs> I want to punch more things, more right hooks <laughs> this this year is, is my is my plan. So, um, my uh, I'm trying to figure out how to how to word this, you know. I kind of said on my own channel a little bit ago is that my, my resolutions are just really the same resolutions I always are. I want to ride as much as possible. I want to work out as much as possible. I want to spend good time with my family and friends. And I want to go to work and do a good job there because they're, you know, that's, that's important. Even if, even if I didn't necessarily need the money 
somebody's got to do the job I'm doing. And um, not a lot of people want to do it right now. So, so that's my thing is to be efficient. I guess my, my, if you wanted to break it down and make it really clear and concise and actionable, my 2019 goals is to be efficient and not get in my own way. So like I made, I usually st actually start my new year's resolutions on my birthday. That's kind of when I start all my spreadsheets over. And my goal was to only make one spreadsheet and use that all year. Don't make hundreds of spreadsheets to track the perfect amount, you know, to do all the tracking. So I just have one. I've pretty much stuck to doing that. Um, is I'm that the collective to... one? Uh, no, that one is extra. So two. Oh, so two. <laughs> but, but that one's really simple. That's just like a column and then we're all in it. And we put our words in there every day. So, uh, so, so basically my point is about be efficient. So instead of doing an app and then also logging in on my spreadsheet for one of my hobbies or something, I just, I just have some things I do and, and don't waste time on duplicating effort. Um, try to write when I'm writing and work when I'm working and talk to my friends when I'm talking to my friends and not overlap less multitasking yeah. and stuff. So that's my main thing. I want, I want to write, I want to do good collaborations because those have been really good to me financially. And I want to get my own books out there, but I'm kind of like for my collaborations, I'm like more on Josh's plan. I have this many words that need to be done because that's the job. You know, you go to work, you work all day that sort of thing. And then my own books are more of my passion projects where if it takes me a little longer then that's okay. Because um, right now those are mostly for me. So that's pretty much it. Well, let you Chuck. Uh, well, um, I want to start by saying I think resolutions are bullshit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've just done an entire show. You can't say it now. <laughs> But, uh, so I, and, and really it's just a matter of semantics because I, I don't like that word, but uh, I do believe in setting new goals. Um, that's just the way I frame it for myself. Uh, the last half or so of 2018 presented me with a lot of uh, non-writing life challenges. And it... Uh, without going into any great detail, basically it cut into my writing life a lot. And uh, because of that, I kind of fell out of my habits and my attitude got really shitty and all this other stuff. So, but it also, the silver lining to it was it gave me the opportunity to sort of step back now that things have settled down and I can sort of step back and look at, look at the habits I had and see ways to, um, improve them and uh, to kind of streamline my process. So my goals for uh, 2019 is I've uh, I want to outline more a little bit than I have been. Uh, I'm gonna <laughs> like put your hands down, John. <laughs> not not to the degree. You that's a hands. win in my column. If anybody <laughs> was counting, that's a that's a not, point in my column. Up until now, I would just find my five to eight little plot points, and I would write from point to point to point, and just do my discovery writing between. But um, when things started getting hinky for me, um, not having more of a roadmap is one of the reasons that my my routine got so disrupted. So one of my goals is I want to I want to do what I was doing, but I want to supplement that with not necessarily chapter breakdowns, but like sequence breakdowns. And you know, sequence one will be this happens. It might take one chapter, it might take four chapters, but it's that I know that's what's coming. And then a sequence two, sequence three, and have all that done prior to diving into the actual drafting of the book. And I think that if I run into any more issues down the road, that will help me still be productive despite whatever dumpster fire happens to come my way. So one of my goals is that. And uh, another one. I really like that goal. I think that might be the best one so far. <laughs> another one is I. Uh, I'm going to try and, I don't know, I, I don't really know how to say this. I'm, I'm going to try and be a little more active in the community somehow. Because I get on here with you guys and I run my mouth and I drink my bourbon. and You know, I drop little Papa Chuck's little pieces of, of bullshit wisdom here and there, that kind of thing. 
but uh, you know, I was doing story shots for a while and that kind of fell by the wayside. So I'm going to try and find something else along those lines where I can talk to, to other writers, younger up, up and coming guys who might need some guidance here and there. I'm do not start sending me shit, but I, I'm kind of considering maybe taking on advisory roles like book doctor kind of stuff here and there. Uh, just, oh, yeah. you know, not nothing too crazy. But you know, I just just try and try and get a little more active in the community, and uh, and uh, also I'm gonna I'm gonna start uh, focusing, you know, thinking a lot more about audio because I really started getting into that at the end of this past year, and I want to start when I'm writing now. I want to try and start have in mind that at some point someone's going to be narrating what I'm writing because I really really believe that if we're writing books these days without thinking about the fact that audio is coming that that's really just leaving money on the table because that market is the more i get into it the more i talk to james and michael uh it, that is just it's like a three billion dollar industry right now it's just huge what's crazy to me is i was listening on another podcast and they were talking about their um their thoughts on what was coming in 2019 and one of the things they said about audio which really surprised me um was and i'm paraphrasing so if you listen to the podcast that i'm talking about and, and you hear it differently i'm sorry but basically they were saying that they did not think that audio was where it needed to be so they weren't really worried about investing in the market because it wasn't there yet and um, I, I, violates I don't group. you gotta you well know, it's good to where be. exactly do they think it needs to be I, I don't know. And so my thing is like, like, did they give any anyway, justification and, for that? Cause you know, I mean, I've, I've got I, an instinct. I don't, I don't think that. that they did. I don't think they did. I think that, yeah, that they, uh, like they, they personally. Yeah. But the thing is, is like audio and, and eBooks and print are, are completely separate markets, are. completely yeah. separate. And the, the audio book has been around for 20 years. Right. But it's just now, kind of exploding because of yeah. the the audible app and all that other well, stuff but I, mean, I remember listening to cds and cassettes yeah and me too 80s i mean I well, literally... and that's my thing. even even if their logic is correct and it's not where it needs to be why wouldn't you get on it now because if their logic is correct and that's not where it needs to be then you follow that forward and two or three years from now it is where it's going to need to be if well, you're on the I ground floor earlier. right like like look at like people like that had joined the when free did something for you on amazon and look at where you're at now like this is oh, the, the time where you want to be in on auto rush. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just I could not believe when they said yeah. that I was like, oh I my god, sell, it's audible! I sell you need four to be times, at. four times the audio that I sell ebooks. Yep. Um, and I think I've heard other guys say that at least three quarters of their income comes from uh, from audio. Audi audio huge. And it's huge. I know that ninety percent of the books I read are audio books. Just yeah, same here. No other way for me to do it. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think that's insanity to even claim that it's not where it needs to be. That's like it reminds me of when I was in the music industry and like the the publishing companies, the the uh, they wouldn't count digital sales toward your advance. Um, and I'm talking like like when iTunes was already big, and they're like, no, that doesn't count. You need to sell CDs. Right. Like that's great for you. Like you're making money. I'm what? I'm not. Just yeah. you don't count that as a real sale. What, Come on. What's crazy is that digital sales cost nothing. Exactly. Like the the ROI is almost a hundred percent because you don't have to spend money to produce the CD or the cover or the booklet that goes in it or anything. All you have is a file, and like you made it once, you sell it a million times. Well, you got there's so much momentum in the industry. I think um, Dave Chesson um, articulated it best when uh, he said he was having meetings with. Um, like uh, big five book, book publishers, and they're going, uh, you know, only a year ago, have you heard about this Amazon thing? <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> you know, so you can't you can't assume that um, even the even the people you would expect have some kind of um, magical insight, knowledge, or just simply are, should be professionals and do the research and homework and know about these things, emerging trends and. Uh, 
um, we call it futurology, where a business sort of looks at the uh, looks at down the road a little bit. Um, I mean, take, take, I went to a really interesting lecture by a chap called Ian Pearson, um, who's part of British Telecom over here, and um, his job. He was hired. It sounded like an amazing job. Uh, was hired by um, BT not to look at what next year's advances are going to be or even 10 years. It was to start road mapping BT for 50 years ahead. Uh, and, you know, I, I wouldn't suggest that um, from, from most of us, certainly not me, would be writing still in 50 years, but we've got to have that kind of forethought. We've got to sort of it, 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 look a little, little bit down the road and start positioning ourselves. Because uh, if, if one of us, or, or if, if any of us, um, identifies a, uh, something similar coming down the road to what was the, the gold rush era of Amazon, it, it, we all know how much money was being... Uh, it, it, Amazon was basically saying, give me... You know, <laughs> backing up dump, dump the trucks of cash yeah. to people's uh, door, weren't they? Right. Uh, and for, for, for relatively little time, effort, and resources on those authors' behalf. Um, so... I want to blow your mind with a little bit of tidbit of information on emerging markets. Let's just stay with the let's just stay with the the frame of reference that Audible is not or audiobooks are not where they need to be at, right? So when Google AdWords started back way back when, when Google AdWords first started, um, they were extremely cheap. And everybody that was in advertising ignored them. They stayed with TV. They stayed with print. They stayed with radio. They completely ignored Google AdWords, except for one company. Do you know what company that you know what company it was? Amazon. Amazon. Amazon poured one hundred percent of their marketing budget into Google AdWords. And became the biggest Took over the retail world. company in the world. And so if you can get into that emerging market and just nail it down when nobody else sees it, like what we're talking about right now, if people don't believe that audiobooks are where it's at, audiobooks are where it's at. Like yeah, that's the time. that's the market. Especially especially in the future. I mean, especially they're going to they're only going to grow. Yeah. I was watching uh an episode of Ninja Turtles that took place in the future, and they had these little floppy disc-looking things. It was pretty wow. cool. I Were think they that's square. Were that's, they round? Uh, they might have been square. So I think that might be the emerging market. Like maybe I could put all my audiobooks on like those square <laughs> discs. <things. laughs> you could put a couple of chapters. I've on got those this. Square ones. Uh, let's do. Let's do this. Let's do some giveaways for the Medium Club. Let's do that. Um, let's see. We'll do, what do you say, Scott? Three codes tonight? We want to do three? Let's do three. Let's How about do, that? Definitely do three. S okay. So on the Medium Club, we have, I'm going to share my screen here real quick so um, nobody accuses me of any shenanigans. Uh, 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 let's see. Share screen. We're going to share that one. All right. Here we go. Okay. So uh, I've got the awesome medium spreadsheet right there and i've got my random number generator here um we'll hit the generate button and uh the mediums you do not have to be present to win uh, but you do have to be on the list um so we're running this off the current list and uh all right let's see number seven let's see who's number seven Drew Avery, <laughs> the luck. Drew Avery gets a uh, short story. Oh, show sponsor what? somehow gets it. That's true. <laughs> oh, that's, that's very odd. I feel the shenanigans corruption, are very, corruption. very odd. Yes. Uh, all right, let's go for number are pretty easy to hack. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm definitely hacking it for sure. Let me get rid of this little thing. Okay, here, let's see. Number two. Number three is... John, I'm pretty sure that's John Evans. Uh -huh. Okay. And let's see, number three. We'll do four for shits and giggles. Number two. <laughs> number two, Jay Clifton Slater gets a audiobook code. All right, one more. Let's see. One, you know what? Let's do three for Scott and one for Chuck. You good for hey, that? Bro, Can you just go ahead and you one could you just go ahead and put the audible code right there in the spreadsheet? Uh just so we can make sure. 
Oh it's, yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure I'll do that. Yeah, just go ahead and copy yeah. it right in there. Yeah, I'll copy, copy right. right in there. Go ahead. Right. Uh, this waiting. fourth one is yeah. going to be for a audiobook of the. Is it the Cordova Vector? Is that the one? We're well, doing? I've got codes for Cordova Vector and Cordova Incursion. Vector's the first book, so I guess I should do one of those. I don't know. Do you want to do a set of two? Let's do, do a set, set of two. two give That's a, a good idea. We'll, we'll and I'll, I'll put them in the chat so you can transfer them to whoever. No, no, just 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 send it to me in Keystroke uh, Facebook chat. I think that's what he meant. Isn't that what I said? Yeah, he's not oh, an idiot. I'm, he's not an idiot, Josh. Come on. Boy. No, no, I, I, will, I am. I, am. I will have put it right there have in the spreadsheet. I will have Ellen stab you both. Okay, here we go. <laughs> uh, this is for the Cordova, Cordova the Vector book books. Yet. Books one and two. Oh, number 20 went right down the list. Let's see. Ah, Ken McClellan. Ken McClellan gets books one and two of the Cordova series. Sweet. We'll write that awesome. down. Congrats, Ken. Uh, so check that out. Uh, if you get on the, our mediums list, you win free shit. Like um, almost weekly. <laughs> almost weekly, you'll win free stuff. Yeah. Uh, so, all right. Let's uh, stop sharing my screen because I don't want you to see all my secrets. Uh, uh, we don't want you to see it. Heaven, heaven you forbid get... you accidentally open up your browser history. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, it should be search, yeah, search, let's not do searches that. for dolls. Why is my incognito <laughs> on? Right? Um, searches for Lucy yeah, so we, we do more than uh, book codes. We do, uh, we've got mouse pads, we've got we've got mugs. Oh, mm. yes, and we've got stickers we've got the stickers uh so if you like free stuff which i do sign up for the mediums club it doesn't cost you anything and we're not going to spam your email unless you win something and i and i'm not personally friends with you on facebook which luckily all these winners i am ah, lucky for me so I don't speak of the um Great deal. i think that wraps for tonight's episode guys um very very good conversation i'm excited for 2019 i'm really excited for a couple of people in 2019 because it's going to be a really 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 good year for some people uh thanks everybody for watching live and hanging out with us if you're not watching live and you're listening on the audio feed shame What's on you you need you? to come you need to come and hang out with us on monday nights monday nights 8 p.m every week we're going to be hanging out here talking about reading talking about writing and there's one more thing we talk about uh, something everything over there in between everything, everything in between that's right everything Rhythm in between right Rhythm here Rhythm on keystroke medium see you guys Peace. bye Ow. laters